Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Wednesday and welcome back to the series, The Havamal, where we examine it verse by verse. This week, we're looking at verse 33 and beginning, as we always do, by examining three different translations. First translation reads, To his friend, a man should bear him as friend, to him and a friend of his, but let him beware that he be not the friend of a foe. Olive Gray. Second translation. To his friend, a man should be a friend, to him and to his friend, but of his foe, no man shall the friends, a friend of the friend's foe be. Vikingerg.org. And the third translation coming from the cowboy, Havmal. Be friendly to anybody friendly to you and to his friends too, but be careful not to make friends with your friends' enemies. And that, of course, is Dr. Jackson Crawford. So this verse is quite straightforward, and I don't want to belabor the point too much. It's essentially about navigating how to expand your own social circle in a community and being able to tell friend from foe. It really is common sense. You and a person get along, then you meet another individual who also gets along with your friend, so it's natural to be on friendly terms with a new person as well. Now, it's not, not necessarily going to be the case that you have the same degree of closeness, but it is about forming an acquaintance on mutually good terms with, a, with both parties trusting in the honor and judgment of their mutual friend. And so the circle expands, and people have more relationships that creates community and a sense of belonging. All very good things, all things that we could use more of in our modern lives. Now let's talk briefly about the part that may be difficult for some, uh, mostly because we have that crowd of people in society who are forever bewailing the idea of judgment and for forbid it in any context for any reason because feelings, and uh, they have really done their best to uh, beat the idea of judgment out of the rest of us, or at the very least to nag it out of the rest of us. Uh, but uh, clearly that system doesn't of never judging anyone doesn't seem to be working because in case you hadn't notice when society abandons any kind of standards and when individuals also abandon standards, everything tends to fall apart. Food for thought. Another uh, thing to contemplate is the old expression of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That has truth, but it doesn't follow that the enemy of your friends is going to make a suitable friend for you. There's a reason why it does uh, call the person's loyalties into question when they engage in this behavior. Now, I think there is some wiggle room with this. I think there is a balance to be struck uh, because there are just some personalities. There's nothing really wrong with either person, but they just don't click and they don't mix well. And it doesn't mean that either person is dishonest or dishonorable or has ill intention. It just means that they don't have any connection apart from possibly uh, a mutual friend. But if we have someone uh, who, who is, who does actually have bad intentions, then it makes for a very different situation. Now, and again, I just want to emphasize, I very strongly shy away from the idea of allowing human relationships to be dictated to um, wholly by others and determined only by their preferences. But at the same time, if you're friends with someone and you know they're a decent person and they have good sense, and then you come to realize that they actually have a legitimate enemy, there's probably a good reason for that antagonism between them. There could be a legitimate reason to also steer clear of your friend's enemy. Now, apart from the whole, we must never judge anyone crowd, which I've already explained my objections to that, there are other people who seem to have this absolute fetish of collecting friends or so-called friends who are highly antagonistic towards each other or with people with whom they have absolutely nothing in common, not even common values, and then they pat themselves on the back for how open-minded and enlightened they are. I mean, you can probably think of some people you've encountered in your life who did have that idea in their head. But I would ask the question, are the people who do this, are they actually forming their own independent judgments of one individual at a time? Or is this just about trying to draw attention to themselves, maybe even being a passive aggressive attempt at a power play? Just something to think about. Um, I haven't really seen anyone offer a pretty good explanation to uh, get themselves out of that particular little corner uh, because I think 
who we choose to associate with and why we choose to associate with them, that does reflect on who we are, uh, the standards we hold ourselves to, the expectations we have of other people and how we think society should really function. So if people are flocking around with the people who have bad morals or, or who don't care about themselves, they don't care about their families or they're lazy or they're dishonest or they do all of these things, there is reason for pause. So, um, just uh, just a few things to contemplate. Hopefully I haven't put you off too badly. Uh, that'll do it for this particular video. Leave your own thoughts on this subject in the comments section below or come see me and the rest of the group on Gilded. There's a link to join Blackbird's Brew. That's the name of our server in the description box. Click it. It'll take you to us and we can have a more involved conversation there. So I hope you'll decide to visit us soon and I will see you in the next video. Bye.